my name is Rahama Mathamia and I am the current Miss England 2021 slash 2022. So I've been Miss England for about a year now. Um, it's been a journey. I think it's become sort of commonplace now. People ask me, how does it feel? It's just second nature. It's like, um, there's two sides to me. There's Rahama Mathamia, Mimi Peke, and then there's Rahama Mathamia, the Miss England title. So it's almost like having two identities um, within one, but it's, it's amazing. You know, it's an experience that I never thought I would have had. Um, I'm on a world platform. I've had amazing experiences. So, you know, it's just, it's a once in a lifetime experience. It's become part of me now. You know, who I was prior to having one is, um, you know, Rahama Muthamia, the 25 year old girl that finished university, you know, is from London, hangs out with her friends. And then there comes the professional side, you know, the, the person that's on the stage, the, um, you know, the performer, the entertainer, the role model, I'd say. Um, so, Rather than separating, I think it's become part of myself. Um, but I enjoy it because you can almost have two sides to yourself and you show it whenever one attacker. So I was born in London. Um, I think a lot of people want to know that I'm from Kenya. Kenya. My family are from Kenya, my mom, my dad. So, you know, through and through, check my blood, I'm Kenyan. Um, but I was born in London, um, raised in London for a few years. I love nearly Hamapa for a few years. I to Kenya, England. I to Paterna. Um, so I was kind of back and forth for the first, let's say, 10 years of my life. Um, went to school here in Kenya. I was a very vibrant, outgoing child, you know, in your face. I always used to say, they used to call me Kasuku. Yes, I remember my mom asking me, you know, why do you talk too much? And I said, because I have a voice, you know. I have something to say. I have meaning, power. I just wanted to be out there. So I think it's not a surprise that I've ended up where I am here. Um, but I was a very vibrant young girl, very lively. I'm British, but I'm also Kenyan. When you look at me... I'm not English, you know, ethnically, um, but I was born and raised in England. So I'm British, but also Kenyan at the same time. So again, I think it goes back into the aspect of identity. I have a dual identity. So I have the British culture, but I have the Kenyan culture too. Um, and I think it just helps me to have both sides where I can, you know, understand the culture from where I'm living, but also understand the culture from where I'm actually from and my heritage, the language, Nangek Swahili, with my interesting British accent. Um, but it also, it just sort of makes me who I am and shapes my identity um, as Rahema. So I think growing up in London, it's a bit different to maybe where you'd grow outside of London. It's such a metropolitan city, so people are from everywhere, you know. It's such a multicultural city, very diverse. So growing up, my experiences were not difficult because my friends were from India, from Spain, from Nigeria. So it was, it didn't feel out of place or I didn't feel out of place. I think once you become a bit older, that's when you become aware of, I'm different. As a child, we're all very innocent, you know. Um, we look different, but we're the same. Um, but naturally, you know, there are people, unfortunately, in different um, countries or in that country that feel that you don't belong. Um, and I felt like that sort of progressed the older that I got and I became aware of, you know, I am different, that I sort of saw the, the racism or stereotypes. Not that it's that prevalent, but it's definitely there. You have to deal with it, unfortunately. You know, I've spoken about, you know, I'm, I'm a black Miss England. You know, when you think of Miss England, you don't think of a, of a black woman. Um, so I think when I won, not that I think, when I won, there were a lot of people that were um, upset um, because it just didn't make any sense. You don't look at me and think I'm representing um, that nation. So there are people that had, you know, some opinions to say. It's not the majority, the minority. Um, you know, views to say I shouldn't be, I shouldn't have won. Um, I'm not representative of England. But I think as a minority woman in a Western country, you have to understand that racism is going to come. Um, and unfortunately, you, you get used to it. You know, you just have to let it be water off your back. Um, know that you're better than that. It's coming from a place of ignorance or lack of understanding. Um, and it's not fair that we have to sort of manage racism. Um, but it's just something we have to experience. Uh, growing up again in a Western country, you don't see yourself reflected. You know, I look on the TV and... Um, I don't see myself. Luckily, now times have progressed from the 90s and onwards. Um, and so there is more multiculturalism in the media um, and within TV and press. But I think, you know, when I have small girls come up to me, like small Kenyan girls or um, girls from India, you know, from a minority background, and they say, you know, I, I see myself in you. I, I can see you have reached there. That makes me feel like I can get there too. And I think it just helps for me to say, you know, um, if I'm in this position, I want to be a role model for you. I want you to look at me and say, I'm able to do this. I'm able to overcome whatever opinions or naysayers. Um, and there's the opportunity to do so because she was able to do so. And if, you know, I have to go through a few struggles here and there, 
um, for me to be able to help someone else, then it's definitely worth it. Rahema Musamia. So I started university at 19, took a gap year. That's something to Nafanyapo in England here. You can either travel the world if you want to or go into work. So my plan was before I go into education, take a year to understand what it's like to be in the real world. You know, so I, I got a few jobs, did some volunteering. So that was my one year. No traveling, <laughs> but I'm making up for it now. Um, so I started at 19. I went to do my um, bachelor's degree in genetics. Um, but I went to three universities. So if you see on my Instagram post, you know, I say three countries, three universities, um, seven year total. So there was a few breaks here and there. You know, I went to live in Sweden for one year. I changed university. I did a gap year. So um, all the way through to getting my master's in genetics. It was, a, I guess, a seven year journey in total. Oh, wow. So I've been looking forward for so long. So it's actually been about 13 years since I haven't um, been back. I'm 26 now. Um, came here two days ago. Um, haven't been long, but it feels like home. Nikan Yumbani, you know. It's, I was telling my family, it's nice to see yourself and your own people. Yeah. Um, you come around, what when I get Swahili, you understand, you know, people look like you. Um, they understand the culture, the heritage, Nakula Chapati, Nastu. So it feels like where I belong. Ninyumbani. Some Gedheri, like good Gedheri. Um, nyamachoma, I haven't had Nyamachoma in a long time. I want some Kachumbari, Ugali. Matumbo. Yeah. I like it when it's not prepared at home. <laughs> the smell is very overpowering. <laughs> yeah, but I definitely want to try some, learn some more how to cook the dishes, you know, um, really come here and get back immersed into the culture. You know, I felt like I didn't want to set my, ex not too high, but I didn't want to um, set my expectations to win. Obviously you go to win, but I wanted to enjoy the experience overall. I didn't want to put too much pressure on myself. I felt like, you know, this is what I've set out to do. I won All African Colors, which was um, a heat to promote women of minority ethnic backgrounds. And I thought, okay, that's amazing. You know, this is the first ever pageant I've entered. I've made it through to the final now. Um, so throughout the experience, I just felt like this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I want to meet new women from across England. Um, I want to enjoy myself. We were in the pandemic um, and this is something new to challenge myself. Um, but I remember walking down that runway and just thinking that, you know, I have to give it my all. Whatever happens from this, I want to leave there knowing I did everything that I could. And um, I, I guess it paid off. I remember being backstage, so I made it to the top five. Um, they asked me um, a question. It was just all, you know, so surreal. Um, every step, so it was the top 40 to the top 20, top 10, and then top five. And I think once I got to top five, I remember being backstage with some of the other girls and thinking, you know, oh, it could be me now, you know. I'm in the top five. I, I possibly could win this. Um, and I remember I left the stage. I gave my answer to the judges' questions, and I felt like, okay, I've done everything I can. Let's see what happens now. And I think the moment I heard my name, I was, I was in shock. Oh, wow, it's dramatically. You know, you wake up in the morning, and your face is on the newspaper. Um, I'm going to Miss World. It was the 70th Miss World, um, which was happening in the pandemic, which was very difficult in and of itself. But I was able to go to Puerto Rico, meet women from across the world, um, you know, have this experience and travel, go to events, you know, um, do charity work. So that's really what I am um, sort of focusing on at the moment and wanting to do more of. And so, you know, if it was just Rehema Muthamia by myself, you know, working in a consulting job, finished university, none of this would happen. So again, it's almost like a, a complete identity swap um, to being Miss England. So I have a, a TV show that I film when I get back to um, England. So we'll see how that goes. I'm wanting to get into like presenting, um, entertainment and that, and a lot more charity work. So yeah, part of Miss World and Miss England was speaking about domestic abuse um, and charity work there. So um, yeah, the next few months are going to be quite busy before I hand over my crown. I'd have to say I have a, I have a little sister. Um, her name is Isabella. She'd love to have <laughs> her name being set out. But, you know, um, knowing that I'm able to, when she looks at me, the confidence that she has um, and knowing that her big sister has been able to achieve all of this um, and giving her the confidence to be who she is as a small woman, of a girl of color, you know, um, you know, being a role model specifically for her and my little brother, obviously. Um, and just, yeah, I guess showing them that you can do and be anything that I think that's what completely drives me.